brilliant stuff, Janice. Really cool. Really cool. Five steps. For about 500 little mini steps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I've given them the um, e-book. Oops. And let me see if I can just put that in the, the chat because, yeah, there is a, a lot of information that I have um, covered. <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's a good job I've got an electronic notepad here because I write <laughs> stuff down. I'd have been like, no, it... I, I, <laughs> this is why you achieve this status of being the influencer. It's the value that you're giving. <laughs> you're able to, to make that. And really? it, it can feel a lot, but I think when people read the ebook, they can go and they can take little bits. And some of them are little bits. It's the aggregation yeah. piece. And just, oh, that's easy enough to add. Some, that might be a bigger piece. It needs stopping thinking. But yeah. certainly people can make a difference there. Um, and I think I think it's it's about assessing where you are at the moment. And that's why, you know, I gave the five characteristics, because this is a really good um, starting point. Those five characteristics to actually establish um, where you are and what you need to focus on. And I, I think many sales, people, certainly many I've come across, they do like to understand where they are at the moment. Yeah, I think if you don't, you're probably questioning, <laughs> are you in the right industry? Because you're supposed to be curious for this anyway. Yeah. You know, curiosity, I think, starts with yourself. But uh, now there's, there's some wonderful things there. Yeah. Yoda, be I will. Or something. <laughs> 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 are there yeah, other very... mentors we could be? I mean, there's so many mentors. There's so many ones we could pick. Yeah. yeah. If, if you don't fancy being a small little green thing, you can pick <laughs> any other. Because, uh, Yeah. <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a question for you, I mean, it's, I've got so many, but it's one that I know sometimes, even quite experienced people, salespeople still sometimes have a diff difficulty grasping, which is this, decisions are based on emotion and justified on logic. Yes. You know, particularly people in quite technical industries, you know, it's like a big piece of kit and this sort of thing. No, 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 we're the most logical industry ever. Can you just expand on that a little bit and think, no, you know, even if you think you are the most logical sale ever, that's a justification? The emotion we want to speak to, a lot of yeah. That. Well, do you know the way that um, B two B has evolved that it lags B two C. We all think we're in B two B, so we're the leaders. We're not actually the way that buyers behave, and we think in our own personal lives. You know, we we go on Mrs. Google and we do the research, and somehow we think when we get into business, it changes. We suddenly start acting. Our behaviours are different. They're not any different. And so, when we, as individuals, purchase things, whether it's a car, whether it's us, we get a feeling, don't we? We 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 make decisions on our emotions because we're human, we're irrational, and we don't stop being human just because we enter the office. <laughs> we do it in the, we make decisions, we only have one way of making decisions and we make it in the same way. And it's taken a while for the B2B world to understand that and um, sales, as you went through the kind of the history of the, all the methodologies of sales, Sales are really slow to catch up. We're a bit slow in sales, really, <laughs> because we thought we knew everything and we have all of the answers. But actually, now the way things have changed, our buyers have all the answers because Mrs. Google has given them all the answers. So you've got to capture people in different ways because all the facts and the figures are online. So you need to make sure that you, the way you convey information is only giving people because we're just our brains are full of so much only give people what they need to move on to the next step not to the sale but the next step it is a process and so don't overload people and the way you give the information vary the modality so that it's not always the same email that's coming out you know be colorful put your personality be colourful, put your personality, you know, into what you do. If you're a humorous person, be humorous in your work life as well. There will be some people that won't get you, but they were never going to buy you from you anyway. They don't like you. That's OK. But there will be some people that will love you. The ones that love you are going to refer you to other people because they love you. They love your sense of humour. They love your colourful nature. They love the fact you're introverted like them. You know, 
be you in your business. So tell stories, put your personal stories about your kids in, you know, to demonstrate something that is quite complex. So you're lighting it and it's things that people can relate to. Other people around the table have kids that, you know, do silly things as well. So you've got to be um, emotive in what you're doing in a business world. You've got to touch people on a human level and that's through their emotionals, through your storytelling, through your personality. Of course, then you've got the return on investment. What is the business case? You've got to have all of that. Once you've got people on an emotional level, they need all the, the you know features, benefits, facts and figures, return on investment to make it stack up. But if you can't get them on the emotional level, you're not going to get to the stage, you know, on the logical level to make it stack up. So cool. But again, I'm loving the way that you are balancing this every time. And it's not just to go out and try and be somebody's best friend. It doesn't work. Yeah. But you don't equally become a robot, much as I love robots. It's, it's getting, it's striking this balance. And that's why I love with, with your framework and the system and what you're talking and all of those elements. If you add these little bits in, you'll be getting this stuff right. Yeah. yeah and, you know, <laughs> like, like your framework, how it's not friends, rocket it? science, is it? It's about the way you pull all of these things together. You, I think that um, there are people, there are salespeople that are doing half of this, but they don't have a framework. They don't have a process. And it's about putting your, what you do really well and understanding what works and just honing those things that are not working, that are not modern enough, that are not up to date. And then all, you know, you're just adding those things in. It's not reinventing the wheel. It's just understanding where you are. Again, you know, so much insight as usual, which is we do bits of it. And then some days you might do one bit and then you forget to do that bit because you're doing another bit. When you've got your framework and you can make sure that I'm doing all the things that make the difference all the time. Yeah. They're on some really, really well, but some not at all. We want to just get that, that balance back in. It's, uh, it's really cool. Absolutely. I've got another really important question for you here, actually. Yeah. Thought you said it, and then you definitely said it. Mrs. Google. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know Google was female. Yeah, yeah. Don't you know women will have all the answers? <laughs> You know what? I yeah. just realized you know, I, I, I make a can of worms for myself here. Yes. <laughs> Go on, carry on. Well, you, scale your sales podcast. Uh, uh, and uh, you've been on it, and you know, uh, I'll um, post your episode again because it was brilliant. And um, I, my aim is to have at least 50% women that I interviewed. I'm so sick of going, speaking on stages in the sales environment and it's majority of men. But actually, women are often the highest performers in companies. And, you know, we're in a global world now. We're on that line now. There's people from all over the world. I was listening to the chat, um, you know, the, the beginning and all the people saying where they are um, coming from. We're in a global world. Everyone is, um, you know, not necessarily looking like me or looking like you. So, you know, we need to ensure that we're reaching everyone. Everyone has a different perspective and, and voice. And so a good 20 percent are ethnic minorities as well, because I want to uh, have, uh, you know, everyone's voice. And yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Google has all of the it's like your mother, isn't it? You you know, you ask your mum and your mum always has an answer, you know, so <laughs> that's why it's Mrs. Google. I, I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, cool. So what I written down there. So um, and picking up just from the chat there. So oh, so much stuff, the, 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 the emotion, the logic. You know, pick the mentor you want to be if you if Yoda isn't right for you. Um, and just the other the other, th the other little bit again. You know, we go back two more minutes and then we'll give people another little break. There's a, there's a question really here actually. Um, oh, shall sorry, I read it I out? That. I yeah, that. I am a creative architect, and the challenge I have is understanding the business case for my client project projects. I get a brief for a new project, but. I need more skills in how to understand the business case before the project. Do you have any advice? Now, both of us can, can answer this. But, you know, the, the thing is, we need to research our customers. So um, make sure you um, have Google alerts so that anything from that particular customer um, 
that you get to understand what they're saying, how they're saying it, what their language is. You want to understand who their competitors are. You want to connect with all of the, the key people and influencers. You need to understand their industry. That is easy enough to do because Mrs. Google has it all there for you. Then you need to um, have conversations at all levels of the organization. My mentor said to me, there's only ever three questions, three questions that you need to ask, and especially in an online world, in that we used to have hour meetings, half an hour meetings, and you'll know, Fred, you'll have a 20 minute meeting online and it gets cut to 10 minutes. So always prepare the three essential questions. It's hard. It's really hard. Three questions will get you all you need to know, but it's only if you've sculptured those questions and really thought about what is the outcome from this one question? Where do I want to move it? How can I ask the question that I, I get all of that information, all of that gold? If you um, interview people in the organization at different levels, 20 minutes, you'll say that I'm, I'm doing, you introduce yourself, you've, you've done the research on them in, online, you've said, do you mind, can I have 10 minutes of your, your time? You've sculptured three questions to gather essential information for people at different levels. That starts to build your business case of what's important to that particular customer at that time at all different levels. Now you know how the language, you know what's important you can even tell them that the impact of this solution on another department they may not have considered that you now know because you've done that 360 research within the customer's organization. Most people will give you 10 minutes. That's three questions. You need to just do the research to make sure that you've sculptured those questions. I hope that helps. I don't know, Fred, I don't, you, I'm sure you can add to this. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I know, I know, I know Graham who asked the question. Um, Graham's the top guy. He's, he's very thorough, you know? Yeah. I'm sure he doesn't mind me saying that, which is good. I mean, I like people who design my buildings to be thorough and accurate. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it kind of goes <laughs> with the territory. So it's kind of like a, you've got your, your, your technical thoroughness, but just a bit more thorough. Just in, as I say, Janice says, asking questions. And again, I was just kind of thinking, oh, you know, the engineering link, five whys. You want this building? Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? There's nothing yeah. Why? Just keep asking why. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe if that's a too direct a question, put it as a you know, tell me, explain to me, describe to me, a TED question. But just keep digging down. Yeah. Why? Why? Be interested in them, and that will help start talking about. Oh, I actually want this because and because. Ah, well, there's your business case. So you just go with five whys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And tell or, stories. Or whys if we're running out of time, but yeah. It's yeah. Just, again, and <laughs> yeah. again and again. Yeah. 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 Tell stories, you know, don't just talk technical, talk on a human level, you know, get people on a human level. We were just talking about emotions. You've got to get them, you know, as you say, why? But the why is often emotional, isn't it? You know, like why this is important to them. What, what will it mean to them? Yeah. Because it, it will probably be a logic, a logic into a tad of emotion. Now we're getting into it. And it's, it's just interesting stuff. I mean, if we're nosy, we're naturally nosy, aren't we? <laughs> we met each other. <laughs> I think we spoke longer off air than we did on the podcast. But yes, anyway, we did. That is so cool. Thank you so much for taking time to come and share stuff with us. You shared a huge amount. Again, thanks for giving the stuff for the goodie bag and, and giving people a way to take it and use it. I mean, that's what yeah. we're all about anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so look, fantastic. I've, 